I'm going to demonstrate now how to use ParaView to visualize the particles that are generated by the DMT, uh, be it tracer particles or inertial particles, whatever it might be. We use the same technique to visualize them, uh, to color them, to track them, etc. And I'll step through that process right now. So here I have a uh, uh, generic DMT output. Um, I have particles uh, loaded up. And in principle, they're showing, right? The little eyeball is open, implying they're showing. But uh, in order to render these uh, these particles, we need to create something called a glyph. Uh, so a glyph is uh, right here. Uh, this is obviously generate a glyph symbol at each point of the input data set, as the uh, command says. So I click on that, and you'll see it creates this sub-item here, a glyph 4, as it happens to have been named. And uh, this is where we're going to define the shape, uh, the morphology, the size, and such of these of these particles. So for starters, uh, I just want spheres. Uh, I don't want arrows or boxes. I want spheres. Um, this will be the sphere radius. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, these are the these define the resolution of the sphere. Um, I just typically use generic values. Uh, you can dial those down if you want the simulation to render faster, or dial them up if you want a better resolution. But for our purposes, usually the particles are very small, and they don't have to be really well resolved in order to communicate what's going on. Uh, we're not going to do any transformations. We're not rotating or translating this guy. Uh, it's just evolving through space uh, at the frequency with which we told the DMT to output data. Now, this is important down here. Uh, Paraview uh, has an option to scale the size of these particles uh, as a, uh, with time and as a function of some property that's been assigned to them. I don't want these particles to be changing in size. So I'm just going to turn it off and uh, not have any dynamic scaling. Okay, When I turn that off, it means the particles... I won't change in size as a function of time. Um, we can down select the number of points we're going to render. I'm just going to, uh, I'll just down select to, to maybe 1,000. So this simulation has hundreds of thousands of points. And uh, if I want to render all of them, that's no problem. I just turn these options off uh, and all of the nodes, all of the particles will be rendered. But just for illustration purposes, I'm going to down select just 1,000 random points and, uh, and, and show them and the time evolution of these particles. So, okay, with that, I'm ready to go. And we're going to see that these particles might look a little big when I first apply. And so they're big, partly because we turned off the scale, but that's okay. We, we can con still control their size just through their radius. Um, I find that values around 0.02 work well. Uh, so hit apply. Uh, maybe that's a bit too small. Let's go to 0.04. You'll get a feel, uh, depending on the resolution and the size of your system, uh, what values work best. Uh, so again, I've just down selected the first thousand. Uh, let's give ourselves a couple more points because that's uh, it's kind of sparse. Let's go up to 4,000. Let's see what that gives us. And again, it's no problem to visualize hundreds of thousands of points. Uh, we do it all the time. I just want to get something that's going to kind of render uh, quickly on this uh, little tiny window I have. So I went back to the beginning. So there are no uh, points at the first time step. There's nothing there. Uh, the points, again, this time step zero, it's you know the nanosecond before points are injected into the system if we had injected them at the first time step. Uh, or if we had not injected them till later, they wouldn't appear till later, obviously. But so let me play here. And so at time step one, two, three, the particles are now there. And they're uh, moving in response to the impeller. I'm not showing the impeller because it wasn't my design. Uh, it was something we did for a client. Uh, we made the tank so I can show that, but I'm not showing the impeller that causes this motion. But it's not relevant. At the end of the day, there's an impeller. It's spinning. And these are particle boxes that decide, uh, uh, designated to be at the top and the bottom of the tank. And they're, the particles are evolving in response to the flow induced by the impeller. And so here they're kind of getting uh, sucked up or pushed around, as it were, uh, by this impeller spinning inside this tank. Um, so you can see the surface ones are getting drawn into this uh, invisible impeller. Uh, the bottom particles are being pushed around by this invisible impeller, which is, again, uh, spinning at a rate that is commensurate with the frame outputs. And so that's particle visualization. I can uh, Let me turn this off real quickly, and I'll up the number of particles we're showing. So let me go up to maybe, let me just turn off the mask. Let's just show them all. And so these are all the particles we had in the simulation. It'll take just a moment to render, uh, again, because uh, there's a lot of them. But here you get a better idea of what's going on with those dynamics. And if I go to, say, a later time step, you'll see these things get pretty well distributed. Uh, and we can show the time evolution of the distribution if we if we march through time as it was previously. But again, now they're homogenized for all intents and purposes. If I go back to earlier time steps, you can see they're in the process of, of homogenization. Here's 200. It looks like it's still sparse, maybe in some regions or the top. If I go back to 75, it'll be a lot more apparent. 
Uh, the system is transient, of course, and it hasn't quite mixed this early into the game. And so that those are particles uh, in a basic sense. And I, make, I can make particle movies the same way I make uh, fluid movies. So I'll go over here, I'll go File, Save Animation, and uh, I will save this guy as just a particle, a series of particle movies. And so we can output those just as we would velocity movies and then make um, uh, make animations, again, as I like to do in Windows Movie Maker. Uh, again, I like to splice things together and make, make things... Uh, have, I have more control when I use Windows Movie Maker, I feel. So that's Particles 101. Uh, um, I think it's pretty straightforward. They're very compelling in how they illustrate uh, how the fluid is moving. And uh, uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'll end. I'll just let this one play a few frames. Again, because I have so many particles here, it's just the graphics card trying to render all these particles that, that really cause the bottleneck. But uh, either way, now you know what's going on, uh, and you should be able to make these simulations and movies yourself.